Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use force fields in Blender. So whenever we're doing a physics simulation, whether it be cloth or particles, we can use force fields in Blender. They're very simple to add in, very simple to control, and we can have all sorts of effects like winds or mag magnetism, whatever. So here is a cloth example. I'll be showing you guys how to do it with cloth. I'll also be touching on how to do um, the vortex. So that's very simple. If you want to make like a tornado or something, we have particles in a vortex. And then I'll also be showing you guys how to do this sort of kind of like neutron star, kind of like um, pulsing out material on the pulse kind of effect. Um, this could be very handy for all sorts of animations and stuff. So I'll go through these little um, examples. I'll show you exactly how to set it all up. This isn't really about cloth or particles, but I will touch it. The main thing here is just learning about the actual force fields. So let's jump right into the tutorial and I hope you guys learned something and you're able to use it in your next project. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna open up Blender and I'm gonna be using Blender 3.3 for making this tutorial. And uh, I'll also enable my screencast keys so you guys can see what I am pressing on my keyboard. So um, we're gonna be starting off with creating a quick little particle system just so we can um, I can demonstrate to you guys how to use the, part, um, the, the force fields. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take the default cube in our scene tab into edit mode and let's just right click with all of that active and just go subdivide. Under the subdivision tab, let's just make it something like 12. And uh, let's just go shift, alt, S and just smooth it out. You could add any object, any mesh object, as long as it has face um, points and faces, some geometry where the particle system can use it to spawn particles, it should be fine. So here we have this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna simply go over to our properties real quick under our particle properties, click on a little plus here. And now we have a particle system and you could just leave it like this to, and mess around with the force fields now. But, I'll, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down the settings here all the way to where we have the field weights. And this is the gravity. If you turn that to zero, you can now see everything just kind of goes evenly everywhere like it's in, in space. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go yeah, let's just leave it like that actually. We'll leave it like that for now. And what we're gonna do is we're now gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go down to this option here called Force Fields, it's the very bottom here. And let's start with one, and I'll just show you some ones that people tend to use the most. So the very common one obviously is wind, right? Because you, you, know, you can be making particles in the air, this um, air dynamics going on, things are moving around. So let's move this effector or this, this force field over here. And you can see the arrow is currently pointing up and this is pretty self-explanatory. So wherever that's pointing to, that's where the wind is. So if we just go in our front view and rotate that, we can now um, go and hit the space bar. And we're gonna see it's now blowing our particles to the side. And it's pretty weak at the moment, but you can see our particles are dying pretty quickly. So let's just select our sphere here. Let's go to our particles and um, let's just go over here to the frame. Um, let's make it 300 long. So that's how long it will be emitting from between frame one and frame 300. And let's increase this over here to 400, the end frame value. And the lifetime is how long the particles last. So let's just make that, uh, let's just make that 400. I mean, just so they pretty much don't die. Okay, so they keep lasting. So you can see here, now we have these particles and the wind is affecting them. So what we wanna do as well, is we wanna now select our force field here and we wanna go over to our properties. Let's click here to get our physics properties. And you're gonna see here we have the wind. And by the way, instead of just having to add in a different one every time, if you want to change this, you don't have to delete it and add in a different force. You just come here to the type and you can change the same options as what you'd have if you just went shift A and then selected them here and added them in. So let's go and the main thing we're gonna do here is the strength. So let's bump this up to 12. And now if we hit the space bar, we can obviously see there's a lot more power in it. You can see this is pretty simple stuff. I mean, um, just the very basics of force, f force fields in Blender are really simple to get your head around. But I'm gonna quickly show you a few different ways you can do this and some examples where you can use it. So let's just say, for example, you were making something like a um, neutron star that was kind of like pulsing out hot gases and plasma on both sides, right? What you could do then in a situation like that is you could duplicate your particle emitter. So let's just move this over in the front view. Shift D, X, move on over here. And then what you can do is you can grab your force, place it in the middle, and then you can change that to just a force. 
And that's just gonna make stuff go everywhere. Whereas in wind is directional, the force here is just going out omni. It's omnidirectional, it goes everywhere. So if you now press the space bar, you can see this happens, right? Um, at the moment, let's bring the strength down to five. Let's go to frame one, hit the space bar to start it again. And you can see here, this is what we have now. Now we have these particles emitting out on both sides. And uh, I rotated this earlier, so I'll just rotate it a little bit like that. But you get the idea, we now have something like that, that sort of effect. I guess I actually said this is omnidirectional, but if you rotate it like this, you can actually see the direction um, does, it does seem to only affect it on two axes. So, um, but you get the idea here. This is a very cool way you can make this sort of effect. Um, you can increase the strength and uh, yeah. So there's a way you could do that. Um, so let's now actually grab all of this stuff here. In fact, let's get rid of the camera and the light. But let's just grab these, let's just press M. Let's create a new collection and call it Particles. Okay, and uh, let's close and drop that down. Let's just um, untick it so we don't see it. And let's click on our main collection here and let's just go Shift A and I'm gonna now show you how to do a cloth interaction. So let's go to Meshes, let's add in a plane. And with this plane here, tab into edit mode. With everything active, go R, X, 9, 0, and hit enter. And let's just right click, subdivide, and let's give this 12 subdivisions. We're now going to select these top verts here, go to your object data properties, create a new vertex group, and just assign it to this group, okay? Now if you go over to your, pro your physics properties in the object mode, you can give this a cloth, and just go down to your shape, and then under the pin group, select that group, so that just pins those selected verts. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see we just have a cloth hanging here. Now we don't see anything acting on it, but as you can probably figure out, we're now gonna go shift A. Let's go to our forces and let's add in a wind. And let's rotate this wind. And with particles, you need um, less force, but with the wind, I always find you need to give it a little bit more because obviously the cloth is heavier. So let's just go over strength of 120. And we go to frame one, and you can see it's not doing anything because it's head on with the plane. So if you just rotate it a little bit and move it back, now you should be able to see, once you go to frame one, it's interacting with the cloth. You can increase the strength to something like 500 until you kind of get the desired effect. You can see now we have a flapping piece of cloth. And uh, what we're gonna do, let's just select that, tab into edit mode, and I'm just gonna select everything, right click and subdivide one more time. Go to object mode, go to frame one, and now you can see we have a little bit more detail here. But yeah, that is a very practical way you'd oftentimes use this. Um, let's now grab these two, let's just press M, send them to a new collection, let's just call it cloth. Go okay. And let's just hide that for now by unticking it. Let's click on the main collection. Let's look at something else. Let's look at the vortex, how to make a vortex. Let's go shift A, let's just go to force fields. Let's add in a vortex as the name suggests. And let's just, instead of making a new particle system, let's just enable our particle system. Let's select one of these um, balls here, shift D and let's just move that duplication to our main collection. And let's just untick those particles. And now we have this into the main collection as well. And let's grab this guy and move it into the middle and then S to scale it down. And now let's go to frame one and hit the space bar. And now you can see we have these things orbiting around this vortex. Let's increase the size a little bit. And uh, let's just grab our particle system here. Let's just go to our particles. Let's just click on this little free here or this little number just to make it its own. And let's just go down to the viewport display and make this 0 0.03, just to make it a bit smaller. So now you can see how we could make a vortex in Blender. You can go down to your um, gravity here as well and you can increase that or let's make it negative so let's make that negative 0.5 so now we have the particles going up but as they're going up they should also be rotating so if we grab this vortex here we go to our physics we can actually make that stronger so now we can see these guys are rotating like that like they're in a tornado how cool is that and you can increase or decrease the strength at any time so there is a very practical example how you would um, be something you would do in visual effects. If you were making a tornado or a twister or, you know, like kind of like fire coming down or something, that would be one way you could do that. So as you can see, here are a few examples. I'm just going to call this um, vortex. And we now you can see here we have these different examples. So we have cloth, 
And uh, the more detail you add to that by subdividing it, the nicer it'll look when you run the simulation again. Um, but like I said, you really have to increase it quite a bit with that. So I might even take that up to 1000 with the strength for the wind there. Maybe even 2000. You can really bump this up quite a lot. It doesn't really matter. So there you can see, we have a nice uh, cloth reaction. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial. This was just kind of like a beginner's introduction to um, force fields in Blender and how you can use it in different little examples. So I hope that has been useful. If it is, please like and subscribe. Check out some other content and I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.